Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I'm here to uh, continue with um, showing you how to create better patches using Thor. And I thought what I would do is um, I would um, start off with uh, a chiptune patch and uh, this is kind of like chiptunes part two because I already went over a lot of different ideas for creating chiptunes. Um, but this is another one that um, I thought might be interesting. And I'm also going to show you another little trick along the way with Thor. I know I haven't really talked about the step sequencer too much, but we're going to use it in a v quite novel way um, and apply it to a button and do a lot of interesting things. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to create one button that allows you to turn Thor into a 16... Um, it, it, to turn one Thor patch into 16 different separate distinct sounds that you can cycle through using one of the buttons in Thor. I thought that would be a kind of an interesting trick. So um, let's start off with an initialize patch and I'll start by creating um, a basic... Uh, I'll start with showing how to create the button that cycles through all the different um, sounds and then we're going to create the actual chiptune and then we're going to show how you can create variations for it. So to start here's how you create a button that cycles through different sounds on and off. First thing we're going to do is we're going to call this the stepper. Okay. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off the step sequencer, the note trigger step sequencer. We're going to turn that off. Uh, then we're going to go down to our step sequencer. We're going to turn the run mode to step. We're going to click on four steps so that we create a four step sequence. You can actually create this up to 16 steps without any problems. Um, you're going to make sure that the octave range is full and you're also going to turn your global envelope sustain all the way up and turn everything else on the global envelope off. And I should also mention that if you go into your uh, edit preferences um, ensure that under your uh, where is it under general or no sorry it's under audio under audio make sure your sample rate is set to 44,100 um, this ensures that the gate is timed correctly so just ensure that that's set correctly otherwise you may have to um, adjust the sustain of your global envelope for this little trick to work properly Okay, so first thing we're going to do in the uh, modulation bus routing section, uh, first thing is to select button one. Uh, sorry, not rotary one, we want button one. Um, we're going to have that be 100. The amount is 100, and we're going to send that to the global envelope gate. Then the next uh, line is um, we're going to have the global envelope and we're going to have that be negative 100 amount and we're going to send that to the step sequencer trigger okay then over here on um, one of your double assignment lines what you're going to do is you're going to select button one again the amount's going to be 100 and the destination is going to be the step sequencer trigger and the same thing another 100 amount sent to the same value, the step sequencer trigger. Essentially what this is going to allow you to do is use this button to step through each of the sequences um, but you only have to press it once and it'll keep going through your sequence. Okay. Now this doesn't seem like it's very powerful at first but um, if you really think about it this allows you to create 16 different unique sounds and you can apply different settings to your step sequencers to to the different um, areas of your step sequencer to the note to the curve one curve two and um, once you assign those parameters you have basically got 16 different unique patches inside one single Thor. So to showcase this a little bit um, I'm not going to do all 16 I'm just going to do four and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the chiptune sound and this is an interesting way that you can create chiptunes um, what I would do is choose a wavetable and let's uh, choose uh, what would be good let's choose the PPG1 dual VCF okay so that's going to sound like this okay um, 
and that shouldn't be running. Why is that running? Hmm. Oh, sorry. Turn off your global envelope gate trigger. There we go. Okay, yeah, sorry about that. You have to turn off your gate trigger for your global envelope. Okay, and that way it won't run. Um, okay, so now let's take uh, LFO2, and we're going to have that go 25, an amount of 25, and that's going to go to the oscillator 1 frequency FM. And then we're going to change the waveform. Uh, we're going to change the waveform upward, and we'll choose the four stepped wave. And then this will sound like this. Pretty cool. Okay, now let's also change this to a state variable filter um, set to uh, band pass, and we'll have it quite low and increase the resonance, turn off the envelope, turn off the velocity, turn off the keyboard tracking. We don't need the filter, so you can turn that off. We do need the amp envelope, and the amp envelope is going to be decay full. Everything else is going to be lowered. Okay, so there's a basic chiptune sound, and um, you can try out the different uh, wavetable um, the different um, tables because you can get some pretty cool chiptune sounds out of them. We're also going to turn the position down. Start off low. And now, here's where the real fun comes in. What you can do is you can take, um, let's see, step sequencer curve 1 and apply that to the position the oscillator one position um, and then we can start shaping our sound with not the gate length with the curve so and then we can also take curve two the step sequencer curve two and we could apply that to the LFO two rate so then go down to curve two, and we can start playing around with that as well. And turn the rate down to roughly 0.24 hertz. Okay, and now let's take the step sequencer note and we will apply that to the filter one frequency. Uh, so let's see how that's going to sound. Go up to your note to edit your notes. Make sure this is on full. Okay, and finally, what we will do is take the step sequencer gate length and have that applied entirely to the shaper drive. We'll turn on the shaper, set this to sine, um, and then let's see how that sounds. Whoops, I'm applying this to the note, aren't I? Okay, let's just redo that. Okay. All right, let's go down to the gate length and let's. Thank you. 
And there you go. So now that you've got your sound set up um, using the modulation bus routing section and the patterns in the um, step sequencer, now you can use your stepper over here, your button one, to step through them logically. So you'll hear how it sounds. <laughs> So you can have lots of fun doing this. You can set up, like I said, you can set up 16 different um, sound generating devices inside one single Thor. If you're a very clever developer, you can take this uh, to pretty much uh, anywhere you want it to go. Um, it's not, you don't ha necessarily have to apply just to chip tunes. You can take this idea and apply it. You can have 16 different bases in a single Thor. You can have 16 different pads. You can have 16 different. Um, strings, whatever you want to apply it to. So it's very powerful, very simple to do, and I hope that gives you some inspiration and some ideas. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Rob. You can visit me and uh, find new tutorials and, and more tutorials to come at my blog at reason101.net. Thanks for watching.